Hello again, welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is BGFH and I am back for another video for you guys here. Actually, what I'm going to be doing here is uh, recording a series of very short videos for you and splicing them together for long, one long one. Um, I will apologize in advance. Um, this video is probably going to be really ghetto <laughs> as far as editing and piecing things together. Um, but what I'm showing you guys today is a quick sneak peek at um, Windows 10. I am using Windows, the latest build of the Windows 10 preview on my old computer that I used to record videos on before I upgraded earlier this year. So uh, what you're looking at here is Windows 10 running on my old desktop here. And I'm using the Bandicam software to do full screen recording, which I just got, um, I just figured out how to get working. And I also wanted to test both Fraps and um, Bandicam to make sure that they are going to work under Windows 10. And right now, um, Fraps technically runs, but it doesn't seem to want to actually record, so running doesn't do a whole lot of good. Um, but Bandicam seems to be working quite nicely, so... Um, you know, before I really upgrade to Windows 10, that's one of the things that I'm actually going to kind of make sure of because I'm doing these videos so often for you guys. I want to make sure that not only all my programs and games run, but that I can actually do recording as well. And this Bandicam thing is really seeming to impress me. Um, so anyway, enough about Bandicam. Um, this is just uh, the intro part of my video. Um, when I come back, I will give you, I will start to show you guys a little bit more of Windows 10. Before I go, actually, I, I also want to mention, if the resolution and stuff looks a little jacked up, um, <laughs> it's because I'm using a really old monitor with this, and it's not a very high resolution monitor. I am running it through DVI, but it does not look particularly good. Uh, as far as like the resolution and it's just it, it's some weird resolution that I'm not quite sure what's going on, but um, That's why if things look a little bit different, you'll know why so back in a minute All right, I'm back um, Basically as I'm doing these little clips of videos the reason I'm doing that is because I'm only using the trial version of Bandicam on uh, this computer uh, on like my regular machine that I used to record and I only have a short time limit so I want to make sure that I don't end up recording one of these clips too long and then cutting off a bunch of stuff. So, Windows 10. Um, our desktop looks pretty familiar. You know, we've got just a whole bunch of rows of icon, or rows and columns of icons on a grid. Got my wallpaper going on there. Now, the one thing I will say right away that's different is that um, Windows 8 had this to a degree as well. Uh, but if you're coming from Windows 7, um, it really ties into your Microsoft ID a lot more, which is kind of a cool thing, actually, because I had originally done a little Windows 10 uh, preview on a machine at work, but that machine was so ridiculously old that it technically ran, but it, it runs like garbage. <laughs> so I was able to kind of get a little quick peek at some of the start menu stuff and everything, but uh, it, it still, even even when I've updated it, I mean, it, the machine just needs to just go away. It, it's not a good machine anymore. It's done its time. Um, but when I ch when I made the settings on there, linked it to my um, Microsoft ID, when I signed in over here, it kept all my preferences. So like, oh, if I had something set up a certain way, if I had, like, if I had a certain wallpaper, if I had a certain color scheme or options in somewhere change a lot of that seems to follow you from computer to computer so if you have multiple devices maybe you've got a desktop and a laptop maybe you've got a desktop or laptop and a tablet um, a lot of your stuff will share and because you're logging in with your Microsoft ID boom if you got a Hotmail account if you got an Outlook account that stuff you don't even have to configure it anymore uh, it's just there so um, First thing I'm going to give you a quick peek of, I don't have any assistive technology on right now. I will turn some on here shortly, but we're just going to do this uh, fresh here. Um, so for those low vision users, I will show you. This is the new start menu. So as I've talked about before, it's um, a hybrid of Windows 7 and Windows 8. You notice on the left there, you've got your 
you've got your column of your traditional kind of start menu items. You've got your recent, um, your recent programs, a few other settings. And then over to the right, you have your grid of Windows apps, um, what they used to call Metro. So you've got your apps listed there. And then on the bottom there, you've got your search field, which is a whole other cool spiel um, with the whole Cortana integration. So um, that is there. Uh, there is a start menu. Um, I'm going to use my Windows Plus key. Boom. Let's zoom that out a little bit. That's a little ginormous. Um, so just like Windows 7, just like Windows 8, I have my full screen magnification as usual. Nothing really has seemed to change as far as the magnifier. You know, I was uh, kind of maybe hoping that they would maybe smooth things a little bit more uh, for some users that can definitely really help. Uh, let me open the start menu again just so you can kind of see. So if you're low vision, um, so there's like my, there's my uh, name there. I've got all my recent programs or mo use programs. Got some other stuff over here and then I've got my um, list of uh, apps. So you get your Xbox, your store, your mail, calendar, there's a Skype one, um, all kinds of stuff. And, I, and again, I will go through this with uh, assistive technology as well here soon. So let's back out of here. Um, so that's kind of one of that's one of the main differences with the new start menu. I'm gonna stop it here again, and we'll continue here in a second. All right, we're back again, and this time I'm going to show you the start menu with the built-in narrator for Windows 10. So just like Windows 8 before it, in 8.1, I can hit Windows Enter. Starting narrator. And boom, we have narrator. Now, again, if you're used to Windows 7 or, God forbid, even Windows XP, um, you notice that the Windows narrator voice in both Windows 8 and 10 the voices are a lot better. So search window, search box, editing. So I start out my search box. I can down arrow. Start window, account picture for Jesse Anderson button. Okay. Account so picture for Jesse Anderson picture, button. And I can do my stuff in there, like for my profile and whatnot. Internet Explorer, one of seven. Internet Explorer, I use. That Internet a lot. Explorer, Steam, two of seven. Steam. So like I said, everything. Steam, um, two I of seven. I didn't do a fresh install of Windows 10. I actually upgraded from Windows 7, um, you know, right before I um, stopped using this computer to record all my game videos, um, all the same stuff is on here. So I still have Steam, I still have all my games, my movies, my music, all that kind of stuff is still here. And uh, so that's, uh, like I said, it, that process seemed to be pretty seamless, actually. Fraps, 3 of 7. So there's my Fraps program that I'm Fraps, actually... Fraps, 3 of 7. To Notepad, 4 of 7. Windows Live Movie Maker. Scott. Six of seven. Snipping tool. Seven. Bandy fix. One of one. So bandy fix. File explorer. Sure one is. of two. Settings. Two. File explorer. Settings. Power button. So there's your power button. There's where power all button. Your, like restart and shut down and all that kind of stuff is. All apps button. All apps. So if I hit enter on all apps. Back button. Bandy fix. Bandicam. 3D builder. Adobe Reader 11. Alarms and clock. So two of six. So it kind of works more like Windows Amazon 7 folder. does. Three. Amazon music folder. Four so of six. There, you know, now if I just Amazon through, Music I'm Folder, not go 4 of 6. Of these, but, uh, I Xbox's can Group Group Header contains 12 items. Oh, that's interesting. Hold on. Command not available. I hit right arrow, and actually it didn't open the tree view. Let me go Start window. Left. Recently added. 0, 9, A. Group. Uh, B. Group. C. Group. D. F. G. H. Group. G, oh, that's F, interesting. Group. Um, Fear Combat. SEC. Food and Drink. 2 of 3. Fraps Folder. 3 oh, of 3. okay. Hold on. Food and Drink. 2 of... Fear, com fear Combat. SEC DVD audio extractor, fear combat. So I, I'm actually learning right along with you guys. So what also happens is now because you have the multiple columns, and I don't know if this is going to be changed for the final release or not. Uh, I need to play with this a little bit more. But what happened was is I hit the right arrow, and it went from the left column where all my menu items are to my right column where all my apps are. And normally, you know, when you were in Windows 7, let's say you had a tree view for your all programs, and then you could kind of open up your folders and then see what items were under e under there. Um, if you use the caps lock and arrow keys, which is how you kind of cycle through with narrator. Fear combat, food and drink, fraps folder, fraps, games folder, one of six. Um, so let me, yeah, so now if I hit, basically if I hit my, 
caps lock space bar, it kind of does a, it does a little open thing, and now I can caps lock right arrow. Games, dishonored, two. health and fitness, one of two. So there's a whole, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Little finicky right now. I haven't gotten everything down. I mean, honestly, I don't use the start menu even in Windows Seven. I don't use the start menu hardly at all. I either launch all my games through Steam or through Windows Explorer if they're not in Steam. Or I will use my search, uh, even in Windows 7. Like I said, I use the search constantly, even to bring up programs, control panel settings, all that kind of stuff. Um, so if I go to my right... Xboxes group group header contains 12 items. Command not available. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Now I haven't totally figured out how to Xbox, navigate... Xbox, one of, store, beta, two of 12. Store, beta, opening parenthesis. Store, items, Skype. Three of Skype, three so now of twelve. I'm just going through. At Microsoft dot Windows communication apps underscore seventeen. At Microsoft dot Windows mail five of twelve. Mail five of twelve. Now I don't know why, and I noticed this. Uh, I don't think this used to happen, but when I'm in my, one of my recent builds, um, I noticed that when you narr when you arrow through items in this list, it repeats them twice, and I'm wondering if it's looking at the picture and then the actual text label, and that's why it's saying them twice, but. You can get there. It's a little messy right now. Calendar, calendar, six of twelve. But maps, seven of maps, seven of twelve. One note, eight of twelve. Um, One note, eight of twelve. Photos, nine of twelve. To be perfectly honest with you, I have not messed with hardly any of the actual apps just yet, mainly because even in Windows 8 and 8.1, I really don't use apps all that much. That may change in Windows 10 as they become more integrated into the core experience of Windows, but for now, I'm just, I'm not really feeling it. Um, you know, I either go to the web or I use traditional Windows programs or whatever. Um, but that's kind of a quick intro to the start menu. Now for this next part, I want to show you a little bit of Windows Explorer because this has actually changed a fair amount. Um, from Windows 7 even to Windows 8 and now to Windows 10, um, it's similar, but kind of different and I don't know if there's a way to kind of revert back so I'm gonna hit Windows E and keep in mind I'm still running narrator file explorer window so file explorer window so, so here's here's the thing you have your left tree view as you normally do and on your right I'm used to Windows 7 I mean I you know I use Windows 8 a little bit at work but not a lot um, but they do things a little bit differently there and then in Windows 10 selected on the top, downloads selected desktop one of four. It gives you shortcuts to Item one of your most where most people are going to commonly access things. So you have your desktop. Selected. Downloads. Two downloads. of four. Downloads. Selected. Fraps. Three of four. Now. Item three of fourteen. I added this manually, so the top area is kind of reserved for your most frequently accessed areas. So maybe if you have a college folder that you, you know, a folder where you have all of your documents or your, uh, you know, your classwork or homework or whatever um, if you have your you know a job folder you, maybe you have a resumes folder um, maybe you have a music folder that you access all the time and you want to access that that way um, you can go to those specific folders use your context menu your application key or your shift F10 and one of your options is going to be to oh I forget even what it's called maybe I'll show you that here shortly um, but you, so what I Selected. do is I pin Selected. because I you, you item know, three of fourteen. You have your most recent select, views, select. so I wanted to put my fraps right up there. Now, if I arrow down, selected greatest hits four of four, greatest hits greatest item hits. four of fourteen. I have no idea why that's there, but that wasn't there last time. Recent files ten. Group so then you have a whole list of uh, recent files that I can selected down. zero one dash zero one man in the box dot mp three one and of ten. And it was just some files. I was testing out a whole bunch of just random songs. Uh, I was testing. I'm actually recording this using my. Uh, Megalodon headset, so hopefully the audio quality isn't too crazy on you. Um, but I had to do a little bit of adjusting there, and uh, it's eh, so far working fairly well. And the interesting thing, side note, really quickly, because uh, this is sort of relevant to Windows 10, is that I found that you know I, you watched all my recent headphone videos recently. Under Windows 7, even on my new computer, the Megalodons sounded kind of meh. I was underwhelmed with them. I plug these things in under Windows 10, 
And I don't know what kind of different gener generic sound driver Windows 10 has, but man, does it sound like night and day difference. Like, holy crap, if these actually would have sounded this good under Windows 7, I may not have had to do all this headphone hunting. Uh, I don't know what the cause is, but it's way different. Um, so you got your files selected. here. Selected. Just, oh, 01 dash. Right, selected. You know. 01 who I are dot mp3. So, Item now six of I can shift tab, or I believe F6 works too, but I'm going to shift tab. Quick access, one of two expanded. Now I'm in my um, tree view on the left, so I'm going to arrow down here. Desktop, pit, downloads, fraps, pit, greatest hits, OneDrive, so one of three collapsed. There, there's your OneDrive. I should also mention that when you sign in with your Microsoft ID, you also have kind of like your Dropbox-esque OneDrive, so if you synchronize your documents, uh, that can be a huge advantage. Uh, make things a lot easier to synchronize files across devices too. This PC, two of three expanded. So there's my this PC. Desktop, one of twelve documents, two of twelve downloads, three of twelve music, four of twelve pictures, five videos, six of twelve local disk, C, seven of twelve collapse. So now here is where you get to your local disk. So new volume D, eight of twelve new volume E, nine of twelve collapse. So let's say that I wanted to. I'm going to go into my new volume D or new volume. New volume. Let's e, go to my new nine of twelve collapse because that's where all my media is. So let's say that I want to add. So now on the right hand side, I can uh, tab over. Amazon MP3 one of seven selected. Gaming music two of seven selected. So let's say Amazon MP3 one of Amaz seven uh, let's selected. Do my gaming, gaming music. music. Let's say so. I'm gonna hit my application key. Item two of seven. Column one. And I'll show you what that item is called because I can't remember right off the top of my head. Context menu. Open in new window. Pin to quick access. Add to VL. Pin to quick access. Menu item. Pin to quick access. That's, I believe, what I want. So if I hit enter on this, and uh, I'm just going to back out. Now, ah, this sometimes happens. Okay. Definitely is still a work in progress. It's not the final build. Um, however, you hear it clicking. Narrator, however, though, has decided it wanted to croak. I don't have any speech. I'm going to try to kill Narrator. Um, let's try it again here. Exiting Narrator. Okay, exiting Narrator. Let's enter Narrator again. File Explorer window. Selected. Gaming there music. You go. Four of selected. Greatest hits. So now I have... Selected. Boom, my gaming music. So if you want to have... Like Item say, 4 of 15. You don't want to one row up two. your whole quick access area, but you have a few, you know huge kind of parent folders that you want to access quickly I will probably do that you know I have one for my documents one for my games one for my recordings uh, music that kind of different thing this um, just kind of a quick way to do that so I wanted to show you what that was like so if you're used to Windows 7 Windows Explorer it is a little bit different um, also I should mention if I hit the alt key App application menu button alt F home tab item alt H um, if I remember right, non -selected. Windows 8 had this too, so you're you're not going to escape it anymore. Uh, even not just Microsoft Office, Windows Explorer itself and a lot of its other windows are going to be having ribbons. Uh, you're they're moving away from their menus. Uh, matter of fact, let me close this. Search window, search box, selected search. Notepad, desk, untitled Notepad, Notepad window, Notepad. file, leave note, edit, leave note, menu item, format, leave note. Menu item. Oh, menu weird. key alt plus o. Okay, so it leaf note. I'm not. I don't know what that means. But View leaf note. Menu item. Format leaf edit leaf so undo. Menu item. We got. Disabled. We still have a menu in notepad. Edit, leaf editing. Uh, let's try word. Search pad window. Quick. Search. So, 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 selected word pad. I think that might have. Yeah, this seems to have ribbons. I bet here. Let's see. Document word pad window selected home tab item alt h. Yeah. So you have that kind of stuff there, and I think I just, yeah, I killed Narrator again. Narrator is, sometimes it works beautifully, and sometimes it's really glitchy, so I really, really, really hope Microsoft fixes Narrator this. settings window. Press any key on the I control. I have reported some bugs through Microsoft's feedback form regarding Narrator, and even a little bit of magnifier issues that are happening here and there. One thing that bugs me about Narrator is that... Um, well, let me let me let me come back and talk to you about this in just a second. F9. All right, so I'm back here. I uh, just wanted to split up another video in case I ran out of time here. So, uh, what I was saying is one thing, and this happens in Windows 8 seemingly at times as well. Um, Narrator seems to love to, like, it does have a crashing issue from time to time, 
but also once you actually alt tab and once this narrator window that is visible on the screen right now once it is here desk task switching window if i alt tab e, file explorer I windows window. e you see that windows explorer is open in the background but this dang windows narrator is always on top and it will not go away the only way to get it to go away so i'm going to close narrator windows settings explorer. window press any key on the keyboard to hear the name of that key general navigation tab. voice chain commands minimize this window and return to your app button and then hit enter on that or i can do a minimize command sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't i've seen this in windows 8 as well so um that is a recurring issue that i hope that microsoft tweaks and fixes a bit in the future because it is really obnoxious especially as a low vision user if you're totally blind you might not notice you may not even notice or care um, but as a low vision user, like I said, this always on top thing can be really obnoxious. Um, you know, it's like when you alt tab away from it, it should go away. Um, likewise with windows magnifier. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to hit windows plus. We have our windows magnifier window. Like I said, Ma magnifier window, changed. desktop selected supports. Ma if I click magnifier here, window options button tool, um, magnifier like options dialog, guys in Set. the magnifier window, Check have these three check boxes you want to check the first one check will follow be check follow the, the mouse pointer check box I'll pl check follow the keyboard focus check box I'll plus K. keyboard focus check have magnifier follow the text insertion point check box I'll plus T you're gonna want to check those otherwise like as you're moving focus like if a dialog box pops up or something or a start menu or just something draws Windows attention away from whatever you're doing um, you'll know what happened otherwise uh, or, or as you're typing you know, if you're typing and your words start going off the screen, unless these two are checked, um, you know, you're going to have to keep repositioning your mouse, and that's obnoxious. Magnifier but window. Getting back to, like, title bar. bugs that I find with magnifier. 400%. Title bar. It's really weird. 400%. Sometimes, title bar. like, the magnifier view, it won't actually move the way it is right now. Tooltip. Like, views. Tooltip. Zoom and all I'm able to do is like it, the mouse will move out of the actual screen view where I can't see it. And then it's a matter of trying to sh figure out how to shut down magnifier. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen some in windows 10. Uh, I haven't really seen it happen in windows eight before. So that seems to be uh, a, a windows 10 specific issue, which I have again reported to Microsoft. So, Hopefully they address that by the final build when well, Windows 10 comes out in late July. Tool, so title let's bar. minimize this again. Um, a lot of your, you know, a lot of the things that you knew in Windows 7 and especially Windows 8 are going to carry over here. Especially, you know, like if you have your desktop, your Windows M, your Windows D will work here. Your start menu is going to take some getting used to. I haven't even really figured out all of the keyboard commands to navigate it effectively, jumping from like the left side to the right side with the um, with the different. Uh, you got the menu on the left and the the tiles on the right kind of thing. Um, but it, it it should be doable. I just saw a tweet yesterday, actually, uh, as I'm recording this, where uh, Jaws is supposedly. Uh, fully going to be working with uh, Windows 10 upon its release. I have NVDA on here and I've been using NVDA. Matter of fact, let's uh, exit narrator. Exiting narrator. And uh, let's start up NVDA. Come on. Taskbar. There you go. Now also, because you can change what voice uh, narrator uses, instead of that horrid e-speak, um, I'm actually using the Microsoft Voices for uh, for NVDA as well. So let me go to my Start menu again here. Search window, search box edit, blank. Now I have my speed faster, of course, too. Blank. Start window, account most used list, Internet Explorer not selected, Steam not selected, Fraps not selected, Notepad not selected, Windows Live Movie, Skype not selected. So it's reading pretty well. If I arrow to the right. Start apps list, Xboxes group group header list, Xbox row one column five, Store beta row one column seven. So it's actually giving you the coordinates, so if I down arrow... Calendar row 3, column 7. Mail row 3, column 5. At Microsoft.Windows Communications apps 17.5.9800.20748x64awekyb3dabbbws resource. No slash slash Skype row 3, column 1. So, again, remember in Windows 8, you have different size tiles as well. So you have your little square tiles, 
you have your uh, wide tiles that are like too wide, and then you have, I think there's even like a ginormous tile that you can make that's even bigger. So uh, uh, NVDA is seeming to already do a Maps row five, job. Maps 5-1. So I've got row 5. With a row 7-1. column one. Maps row 5-1. column one. So I'm guessing, okay, the reason we're going from... Skype row 3-1. column one. Okay, these are the big icons because... Maps row 5-1. column one. Skype row 3-1. column one. We're going from 3 to 5, so if you're low vision, it's actually nice to have these big tiles because you can actually shrink them um, so that all these tiles are actually a lot smaller. Um, you can have them wide, you can have them square like this, but still large, and you can have them smaller. So um, there is that. Uh, Task bar. Go into Windows Explorer. File Explorer window. Tree, gaming music four of desktop one of downloads two of perhaps three of fifteen row one column three. Responsive responsiveness is very good. Gaming music four of fifteen row two no column problem one. Problem there. Recent files grouping expanded zero one zero one man in the box dot mp three six of fifteen. Great tune by the way. I'm not going to play it for uh, I don't want to get copyrighted again. <laughs> um, little Allison Chains tune there, but yeah, so that Taskbar. that's working pretty well. Um, Taskbar. I can still eleven twenty five a.m. You know, do all my general commands. It's reading them. Um, like I said, I haven't delved super, super deep. Uh, I'm not using this as a primary machine by any means. Um, I, you know, I've gone into a lot of the things that I want to test for that I would use regularly. Um, you know, but I'm not using it as a work machine. I'm not really even using it as a gaming machine. Uh, I'm just, you know, tinkering around with it um, here and there. So that's kind of a quick look at, you know, just some of the very 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 basics and uh, once Windows 10 comes out more and I'm fully using let's say NVDA or system access or you know just on the full retail build um, I might do another Windows 10 accessibility or Windows 10 overview video just to show you guys if you guys are interested in upgrading now I have also tried system access and it's been a little while since I've tried uh, some of the stuff read okay but some of it was still a little janky um, they they will have to I think do a few more improvements to make it really workable with Windows 10 so far but I am keeping an eye on that off and on as well there is one other kinda cool feature that I want to show you in Windows 10 which I will show you in just a minute all right, we're back again, and one feature of Windows 10 that is pretty cool, and I'm curious to see how it actually gets implemented, is Cortana. Now, you may remember that uh, you know everybody has their own kind of personal assistant, and you know Siri for Apple, you have uh, Google Now on Google's platform, and now Microsoft, starting with their Windows Phone platform a little while ago, and now Windows 10 you have uh, Cortana and Cortana of course if you're a gamer you know that uh, Cortana is the AI that accompanies you in a lot of the Halo games with Master Chief and it actually uses her voice and it sounds pretty cool so I can hit Windows C search window microphone button going? excellent <laughs> so you know I can just say stuff um, Taskbar. I can also Hopefully this will work. Hey Cortana. Search window. What's List. the weather like today? Cortana, That's me. Uh, okay, that didn't quite work the way I wanted it. And it might be because I'm using a screen reader. I'm using headphones too and stuff, but um, you're probably going to get a little bit of feedback as far as like the what Cortana is going to sound a little bit messed up from when I tried Task recording bar. this before just because of, I don't know, this weird headset, the way it records. Uh, let's try this one more time. Hey Cortana. Hey Cortana. Search window. What's the List. weather like today? Cortana not selected. The forecast shows mostly sunny skies with a high of 75 and a low of 61. All right. So they give you some basic information. Um, I'm going to use the Windows C command just because it'll be a little bit more reliable with the screen reader. Um, matter of fact, Task I'm bar. going to. NVDA menu. Exit X. Exit NVDA dialog. U desktop list. Exit NVIDIA, that way we're not going to get any feedback or anything like that. So, um, let's see, what else can we ask it? I mean, you can do, like I said, you can ask it, um, when is Labor Day? Labor Day is on Monday, September 7th, 2015. All right, 
So let's try. Um, when is the new Terminator movie coming out? July 1st, 2015. So I happen to already know that it's out right now. Uh, it came out yesterday. But, you know, you can ask it stuff like that. Uh, let's try what I did with the Echo. Uh, let's try something like... Um, who played the T-1000 in Terminator 2? And if it doesn't know, you're going to get this uh, Project Spartan, or the Edge browser, as they now call it. Um, I have not played a lot with Edge. I'm not going to go into detail with the Edge browser, because it's been a little shaky as far as accessibility stuff. Um, I still use Internet Explorer primarily, just because... Uh, there's still some accessibility issues that I haven't quite, um, it's not working perfectly yet, um, but I'm hoping that uh, by the full release it'll get better. Uh, I will touch on that more for sure when Windows 10 comes out for real. Um, but get back to Cortana, so what's cool about it is as you use, and this is why I really want to start using the Edge browser over Internet Explorer, because... Cortana is integrated within Windows, within the Edge browser, within, and I supposedly like it, it, it works with other apps too. So as you start doing things, maybe you look up movie times, maybe you, when you wake up, you always check the news right away. Maybe uh, you like a certain band a lot, or maybe you, this, you just, you develop your patterns, or the, it learns that, oh, maybe I like the Minnesota Vikings. So as it learns these things, it's kind of got this Google Now thing going on where it's going to actually tell you or and try to predict uh, and give you things uh, that are relevant to you before you even search for them. So, you know, Apple's trying to start doing this with iOS 9. Uh, Google's been doing it for a while, and I think right now they're the most ahead, but I think Windows actually has a pretty... Especially, you know, they're the main ones that are doing it on the computer desktop. So uh, I'm potentially interested because, you know, one, yeah, I mean, once I check, you know, I check Giant Bomb every day. I check a couple of other gaming sites, you know, so maybe uh, maybe a little bit of, uh, of uh, The Verge or Polygon or uh, PC Gamer. Maybe, um, you know, if somebody's into another hobby or something or wants to check the news. Uh, you can just get all that kind of centrally located for you. And, of course, you can ask it all kinds of weird, screwy things. You know, that's what the, you you watch a ton of videos out there, and people are telling Siri and Google now all kinds of weird things. Um, tell me a joke. A ham sandwich walks into a bar, and the bartender says, Sorry, we don't serve food in here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay. One thing I will say about Cortana is I like her inflection. She actually has a lot more, like, a lot more human-sounding voice. I mean, the way her pitch goes up or just the way she says things. Believe it or not, she can actually sing. I will show you that right now. Sing a song. I can sing this one. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. So, yeah, um, that's pretty interesting. Um, just, like, I'm really interested to see where actual where the actual speech engines for these different uh, operating systems go. You know, as they start to sound more human, um, you know, they'll be able to do singing. Like, I forget what what synthesizer it was, but there was one that did, like, you had to put certain tags in your documents, and it was kind of this uh, extra step that you had to do, but, like, it would, you know, make, it could sound sad or happy or actually laugh, those kinds of things. I'm going to wrap up this segment with this, because this is just great. Sing soft, kitty. Soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. Happy kitty, sleepy kitty, purr, purr, purr. Done. 
All right, I'm back. But yeah, I had to end the Cortana segment with that because that is just great. Um, you know, like I said, it was actually singing. It wasn't just soft, kitty, warm. You know, it was actually singing, which is pretty great. I got to admit, that's the best iteration I've heard of that so far. And I had this, that just makes me laugh. Um, this is probably going to be the last segment for this video. Um, like I said, I'm not going into super detail with any specific technology. This isn't a comprehensive look at Windows 10 because it is still an early build, or it's still a, a preview build of Windows 10. It is not the final product. Things can and will change by the time it actually does come out later this month. And uh, I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't know what's going to get fixed or what's going to change or anything like that. But I wanted to show you just a little bit of a sneak peek from a few different perspectives, show you that Windows Magnifier is still here, it's still full screen, it works. Um, you have uh, Narrator, which is, uh, again, it's going to be, you know, more like Windows 8, and it's going to be hopefully more improved. I really hope they fix the crashing issue uh, where the speech just stops, and Narrator is technically still running, but you have to actually exit it and then restart it again. Um, I also hope that they fix the focus issue of, yeah, okay, you've actually added narrator to your alt tab list, or you alt tab to narrator, and then you can't get the damn thing to go away. Um, you know, the, the, that I hope they fix as well. Um, you know, NVDA is working pretty well. Um, I tried to put this on my tablet. I tried to get a build onto my uh, Windows 8 tablet. And for whatever reason, it was not having it. So I haven't been able to get that upgraded because I really do want to see how the touchscreen iteration, how they you know, how touchscreen impro is improved for both Narrator and um, NVDA. I also really want to see uh, because I can't really tell with the desktop here because I'm using an actual mouse, but. Remember when I talked about magnification in Windows 8.1 on the tablet? That was janky as hell, and I don't really recommend it at all because you have your two separate magnifiers, your kind of Metro tile interface version, and then your traditional desktop version. And the desktop version, you can't really use your fingers in Windows 8. So that is a problem, and I'm hoping that now, you know, when I go to my Start menu here, it's just part of the regular interface. Um, and I'm hoping that that is actually addressed. Uh, I'm really curious to try that out on a touch screen just to see how that is actually going to work. You know, now I can have like a, a regular Windows app running at the same time as a, uh, a tile based app. They can run, you know, I can run either one full screen, I can run them side by side. They run just, they all can run just as Windows, um, you know, regular Windows app programs have always run, which I think is a huge leap forward because that needed definitely needed to happen. I hope that as a touchscreen interface, when you go, like, because you do have a separate touch mode, and I'm not really going to go into that here, um, but if you are using a tablet, you can look at the start menu in more of a start screen interface like you did with Windows 8 and 8.1, um, but I'm hoping when you go into that, I'm hoping that, like, the, uh, remember I commented on my earlier Windows 8 video was that some of the interface elements, like the close buttons and like a list of checkboxes or something in some settings, they were so tiny that they were really, really hard to see, let alone get your finger to actually touch the right one. Um, so hopefully that will uh, be improved as well. Uh, you know, from a gaming standpoint, now here's the interesting thing. Um, I did actually get an Xbox One not too long ago, within the last week or so. And Windows 10 is going to allow me to stream my games from my Xbox One to my PC. So I really, really want to test it. It's not in the current build that I have, and I think I have to get a uh, Xbox dashboard update that's not just out yet for that. But in theory, what I'm really hoping what happens is I'm hoping that I will be able to stream the video and sound over to my PC use something like Bandicam or Fraps, and then I can hopefully show you guys some Xbox One games, and maybe even potentially some Xbox 360 games, as they just announced the backwards compatibility for that. So, potentially, without buying a whole bunch of extra hardware, 
I'm hoping that this actually becomes an, a possibility because that will open up for me a little bit more, you know, as more options as to what I can cover. So, you know, and again, you're supposed to get some performance increases with like DirectX 12 and everything. Um, you know, I'm really curious, like I said, I, I did the whole uh, Oculus Rift VR video, and like I said, I don't know if it came across on there, but I am super stoked about, like, now that I've seen VR uh, with the performance increase and the DirectX 12 stuff, like, I, I really cannot wait. I, I was like a child, you know, just like the, and I haven't had that in a long time, you know, like this just childlike wonder of like, oh man, this is the coolest thing, um, just seeing VR and uh, th that's going to be another really interesting avenue to go down as uh, both Windows 10 and uh, other platforms use that but this has kind of been just a general very basic overview of Windows 10 kind of a sneak peek and also a little bit of a sneak peek from an accessibility perspective really didn't go into any detail but just wanted to give you a, a short introduction as to some of the things that I've noticed so far while playing with one of the preview or some of the preview builds so hope you guys enjoyed it and until next time i will talk to you guys again